Hi everyone, welcome to our tech talk today, the power of Amazon S3 inventory, advanced use cases and best practices. I am Michael Galvin. I am a storage specialist solutions architect here with AWS. So happy to be here today. And I am here with Nishta. Hi folks, I'm Nishta. I'm a senior software development engineer at Amazon S3 and very excited to be speaking about S3 inventory today. Okay, so for our agenda today, we're going to talk about Amazon S3 inventory and its common use cases. We'll show you some examples of inventory reports. Uh, we're going to go over uh, in detail about integrations with Athena and QuickSight and show you some demonstrations there. And talk a little bit more about how you can build visualizations with QuickSight. And then we're going to wrap up with talking about how you can use inventory reports with S3 batch operations. So why would you use S3 inventory reports? So when you need to gather object level information about all of those objects in your buckets, this is where you're gonna to come to look at Amazon S3 inventory, right? If you've ever tried to run a list API for a bucket with thousands, millions, or billions of objects, you know that's probably not the most efficient way to do it. So S3 inventory reports is a solution that can provide this information whether you have thousands, millions, or billions of objects. Inventory reports creates reports that provide details about your objects and their metadata. So information such as how are they encrypted? Are they encrypted with SSE S3 or SSE KMS? Um, so size of those individual objects, right? And even information such as what access tier within intelligent tiering your objects are in. So this data is produced by Amazon S3 and introduces no performance impact to your buckets. So if you ever try to list, right, you're running APIs against that bucket, as an example, S3 inventory reports is managed by the service and creates and delivers reports for you that can be generated daily or weekly. So in a few moments, we're gonna dive deeper into what inventory reports are. We're gonna start off with one area and talk about what questions can we answer by analyzing your Amazon S3 inventory reports. So some common questions we've seen from customers, what Amazon S3 intelligent tiering access tier are my objects in? What objects are encrypted and how are they encrypted? Uh, what objects are less than 128 kilobytes? Um, this is a, a common number because we do have other features that if objects are less than 128 kilobytes, as an example, they won't lifecycle down if you're using things like lifecycle rules. And you can look at things like how many versions of an object and more. So when you need to get that granularity about the objects in your bucket, S3 inventory reports is gonna be the solution you want to look at. One question here I do wanna point out, which is our first question on the list with Amazon S3 intelligent tiering access tier, which, which tier my objects are in. Inventory reports is the only solution today where you can actually answer this question. And we're gonna dive deep into that later and show you some demos about how to do that. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Nishta, talk a little bit more about Amazon S3 inventory. All right, thanks, Michael. Starting with the first question, what is Amazon S3 inventory? Amazon S3 inventory helps you manage your storage by creating lists of the object in an S3 bucket on a defined schedule. You can use it to audit and report status of your objects for business, compliance, and regulatory needs. You can simplify and speed up business workflows and big data jobs using Amazon S3 Inventory. Now, S3 Inventory provides multiple formats and frequencies for its output delivery. Some of them include CSV, Apache Orc, or Apache Parquet output files that list your objects and their corresponding metadata on a daily or a weekly basis for an S3 bucket or a shared prefix. You can configure multiple inventory lists for a bucket. You can configure what object metadata to include in your inventory report, whether to list all object versions or only current versions, where to store the inventory list file output, whether to generate the inventory on a daily or a weekly basis. You can also specify if the inventory list file needs to be encrypted or not. And lastly, you can query Amazon S3 inventory using standard SQL by using Amazon Athena, Amazon Redshift Spectrum, and other tools such as Presto, Apache Hive, and Apache Spark. Some of these advanced use cases we will dive into in our further slides. 
All right, moving on to our next slide, I'm going to now dive into how to configure your bucket with S3 inventory. The easiest way to set up an inventory is by using the AWS Management Console, but you can also use the REST API, AWS CLI, or AWS SDKs to configure inventory reports on your S3 bucket. The bucket that the inventory lists the objects for is called the source bucket. The bucket where the inventory list file is stored is called the destination bucket. The inventory lists the object that are stored in the source bucket. You can configure your inventory reports on this particular source bucket. So the source bucket contains A, the objects that are listed in the inventory, and B, the configuration for the inventory. You can choose which format you want the report in, what fields should make it to the report, how often you want the report, whether on a daily or a weekly basis, and even choose encryption on the report itself. On the other hand, Moving to the destination bucket, Amazon S3 inventory list files are written to the destination bucket. To group all of the inventory list files in a common location in your destination bucket, you can specify a destination prefix, which is an object key name in the inventory configuration. The destination bucket contains the inventory file list. It contains the manifest files that list all the file inventory lists that are stored in this destination bucket. Now, your destination bucket must have a bucket policy to give Amazon S3 permissions to verify ownership of the bucket and permissions to write files to the bucket. It must be the same AWS region as the source bucket. It can be the same as the source bucket it can be owned by a different AWS account than the account that owns the source bucket. Now that we have gone over this information, I want to show you a demo to see this configuration setup in action. For this demo, I'm going to use the management console. On your S3 console, you would be able to configure inventory reports for an S3 bucket from the management tab. Now let's create an inventory configuration. As you can see, here we can specify the name of the configuration, what is in scope for your report, whether you want to include all versions or current versions only, where you want to store your report. I'm choosing a different destination bucket. And how frequently you want your inventory reports. I'm choosing it to be delivered daily in a CSV format what encryption settings to use for your inventory report, and what fields should make it to your report. Here, you're getting a bunch of different fields. For the purpose of this demo, I'm choosing all of them. And there you go. There's your inventory report configuration. So within 48 hours, you should expect start seeing your inventory report files landing in your destination bucket. So this is my destination bucket. And as you can see, reports started to generate daily. We recommend cleaning up your inventory reports after you're done working with them to optimize storage on your S3 bucket. For this, you can set up S3 lifecycle expiration rules to clean up your bucket after a specified period of time. So here, I'm applying the lifecycle rule to clean up my inventory reports after a fixed cadence. Like any other lifecycle rule, you can choose and configure what actions to take. And I'm expiring my inventory reports after 365 days or one year of creating them. And once you enable it, S3 will take care of cleaning up and managing your storage. Now I'm going to hand it off back to Michael, who's going to speak about some advanced use cases of S3 inventory. So now that we've learned about what inventory reports are, how to configure them, the next step that you want to start thinking about is how can I analyze those reports? And here we have Amazon Athena that you can use to help simplify this analysis. Amazon Athena is an interactive query service that makes it easy to analyze data directly in Amazon S3 using standard SQL language. 
So with just a few actions in the AWS Management Console, you'll be able to point Athena to your existing inventory reports, and you'll be able to start analyzing that data, right? It's a serverless-based configuration, so there's nothing for you to manage. Open and flexible, so regardless of what inventory report format you've chosen, so CSV, ORC, or Apache Parquet, right? All of those can be analyzed with Athena and provide your output. And it's cost effective in that you only pay for the queries that you run. The other part to our solution that I want to bring up is Amazon QuickSight. So Amazon QuickSight is a cloud scale business intelligence service that you can use to deliver easy to understand insights to people you work with, right? Wherever they are, this is going to enable you to build some dashboards that you can share accordingly set up the proper security you need so only the people that need to have access can access them, right? QuickSight also has a serverless architecture, so it automatically scales from 10 to hundreds to thousands of users, so, so you have nothing to worry about the setup or configure or manage any servers to help this scale. Also has some additional power, ML-powered insights, so do for anomaly detection, things of that nature, um, and enterprise ready, as we mentioned, about security. So let's put all this together. You've now had your inventory report configuration set up. You have your bucket where your S3 inventory reports live. What we're gonna do is we're gonna connect Amazon Athena to be able to read those right directly from Amazon S3. Athena also has a configuration where you can save your query results to another Amazon S3 bucket or the same S3 bucket. Just have to set up your permissions accordingly. So you'll be able to run and get your results very quickly just by running some Amazon Athena queries. And then if you want to visualize this data, right, this is where Amazon QuickSight comes in. So you'll be able to look at all of this uh, and provide some nice reports and dashboards so that people can get the information they need very quickly. So I'm gonna go into a demo here to show you this in action. Before I do that, I wanna talk about one area where we're gonna focus on this demo which is what Amazon S3 Intelligent Tiering Access Tier are my objects in? And if you're not familiar with S3 Intelligent Tiering, I'll give you a quick overview. We have multiple tiers within this storage class. Right? So Intelligent Tiering automatically provides these three tiers, our Frequent Access Tier, Infrequent Access Tier, and Archive Instant Access Tier. And data moves across them automatically. So after 30 days, for example, since the first access in the frequent access tier, it moves down to infrequent access tier. And then after another 60 days in the infrequent access tier, it can move down to the archive instant access tier. And then optionally, if you want to use our archive storage classes, those are available too with intelligent tiering. So now in this demo, what we're going to start to look at is where are my objects, at which specific tier at any given time. So let me jump right into that demo. So here I am in the Amazon Athena Management Console, and I've got a couple of queries that I have saved that we're going to walk through to show you the results here. Um, the first one here is creating your table within Athena. So this particular query is available in our Amazon S3 public documentation. And we're going to, we'll see the link here in this QR code that you can scan. So you can have a link right to that documentation. I wanna call out a couple of key things within the query. So the first part of this, if you recall earlier when you did your configuration, you chose a list of fields that you wanted to include in your inventory report. That's what we see listed all within here are those particular, particular items. So if you chose not to select everything or only a subset of that, you wanna make sure you modify this query to include only the fields that you need there. Um, and then once you run this and look at this, you, they might be out of order, so you may have to adjust that So when you look at the data coming in. The second part to this, the bottom of this query, is we use projection uh, for inventory reports. This helps simplify that you don't have to come in and run a table repair to get the latest inventory reports. So you'll enter in your date range of your first inventory report. That's the only date you really need to modify and then you can run this and create a table very quickly. So if I go ahead and click run here, you can see there's my new table that's created. And if I just run a quick preview on this, and let me scroll down to the results here. You can see here's all the details that are in my inventory report. So 
every field that we've shown up above is a column that's entered in here. So if you notice something is out of order, that's something you can correct just in your query in the ordering up top of that creation. So let's look about look at how we can find out more about where my objects are within intelligent tiering. So one question I'll get a lot is how many gigabytes are stored in each access tier? So we have a, a simple query here that I've put together. And if we run this and look at our output here, we can see that I only have a gigabyte in our archive instant access, three gigs in my infrequent and 32 gigabytes in my frequent access tier. Right. This is usually an important area what people want to know about because right, the size and capacity that you store in S3 is what you're charged for. So understanding what that is and each of those tiers has a different price point um, could be helpful in looking at that. Sometimes we just want to look at the number of objects. So if we modify that query just a little bit, we can just do a count as the object count here. Pick my date of the inventory report. This is something else I want to call out. Whenever you're doing queries against your inventory reports, they are partitioned by a date and time. So if you don't include a DT, you're essentially querying all your inventory reports and may get inaccurate information. So you want to make sure you choose the proper date of the inventory report you're looking to query. So let me go ahead and run this, this next query. Here I can see I have 136 objects in infrequent, 32,814 in frequent, and 341 in archive instant access. So give me a lot of insight to what's happening in my environment. Another area, because things are automatically tiering in intelligent tiering, right? I want to start to look at what's changed over time. So here I'm actually looking at two different dates of my inventory reports. And I'm comparing to see if anything's changed from this date to this date. Now, if I go ahead and run this query, oops, I can see right between those two dates, 33,000 files, right, changed from frequent to infrequent. So I'm actually seeing intelligent tiering in action here, right, just by these results. Now, this is great. You can have all this as output into an S3 bucket. You can save these results and download them here. Uh, but the other part to this is thinking about, can I build a dashboard to simplify some of this as well, where you need to share this across teams? So let me go into the quick site. Here I have a pre-configured dashboard that I created um, based on similar queries that we just looked at. So if I can come in here, I can get a quick overview based on a report date of where my data is. Right, so my size in gigabytes, like we just looked at in our Athena query. I can see that information here. And I can start to build out other graphicals showing, for example, the count of my objects. And this is a nice graphical view of seeing how that data is tearing down over time. So if you recall earlier, right, after 30 days, we tear down to infrequent. And after another 60 days in infrequent, then we tear down to archive instant access. So you start to see that in action here. And just by using a couple of different fields, I can look at this in a gigabyte perspective from capacity and start to see that same data there as well. So a nice easy way to just see intelligent tiering in action. I mean, you could even take this a step further if you wanna look at it and use some pricing and build out a pricing model of what this means to you as that stuff is moving down across the access tiers. So as you can see, this is just a nice quick way that you can build some graphical information, run your queries in Athena, and get the results you need to help determine what tier my objects are in within S3 intelligence here. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Nishta to talk a little bit more about S3 inventory and batch operations. Thanks, Michael. One of the superpowers of S3 inventory that I want to touch upon is its integration with S3 batch operations. You can use S3 batch operations to perform large scale batch operations on Amazon S3 objects. S3 batch operations can perform a single operation on lists of Amazon S3 objects that you can specify. A single job can perform a specified operation on billions of objects containing exabytes of data. Amazon S3 tracks progress, sends notifications, and stores a detailed completion report of all actions, providing a fully managed, auditable, 
and serverless experience. S3 batch operations also manages retries and generates reports and delivers events to AWS CloudTrail for all changes made and tasks executed. Some of the popular use cases for S3 batch operations include copying objects, replacing all object tags, deleting object tags, initiating restore requests for archived objects, and even replicating objects. A batch job performs a specified operation on every object that is included in its manifest as an input. A manifest lists the objects that you want a batch job to process, and it is stored as an object in an S3 bucket. You can use a comma separated CSV formatted Amazon S3 inventory report as a manifest, which makes it easy to create large lists of objects located in a bucket. So inventory report comes in really handy here to supply as an input to a batch operations job to take actions on all objects listed in that inventory report. Now let's go over a demo where we learn how Amazon S3 inventory can be plugged into a batch operations job as an input. For this demo, we will use the AWS management console and use a batch operations job to copy objects from an S3 bucket to another bucket. We'll also update their storage class to intelligent tiering. So here I'm creating a batch operations job and specifying a manifest as an input. Here, my manifest is the inventory report. Then I'm choosing what operation to perform on my objects in the manifest, which is copy for me, and where should the copied objects end up being. I'm then updating the storage class on these copied objects to intelligent tiering. Then I get to select all the different things like encryption, checksums, object tags, metadata, and access control lists, and even priority on my batch operations job. I then select where should my detailed completion report be delivered for my batch operations job. And if everything looks good, we can configure our batch operations job. Now, once your batch operations job is configured, you can choose when to run it. Here, I'm running my batch operations job, which will end up taking action on all the different objects listed in my inventory report. Once the job is completed, S3 will send a detailed completion report to the specified S3 bucket. Thank you. That's all we have for you today. Hope you enjoyed learning about S3 inventory.